Hi everyone, Leah Case here from Virtu. Uh, I'm behind the scene working, preparing the lessons for our Water Fire Stone series. And this week we are in Numbers 13 and 14. And I'd like to share some thoughts with you. Now this is when Moses sends the spies into the land and come back with a report. And this is a familiar story for most of us, isn't it? Perhaps like me, you grew up hearing these stories in Sunday school or reading them to your own children. But I have to say that it has really come alive in ways I don't think any of us could have anticipated a few weeks ago. The timing of this study has been so amazing. God knew when we started back in September what he was preparing us for, and these stories have been so relevant for us where we are living now. Moses sent these men in to scout out the land that God was giving them. Twelve went in and ten came back saying, there's too many obstacles. We are too small. The inhabitants are too big. We cannot do this. Only Caleb and Joshua came back saying, yes, there are obstacles, but we absolutely can go in and take this land. The Lord will be with us. You know, all 12 men saw the same obstacles and they all had the same experience, but they came to very different conclusions. And only Caleb and Joshua still believed that they could go in and inhabit the land that God had promised the people. So I wonder if we want the same kind of confidence in God's good intentions and God's good promises and plans for us, the same kind of confidence that Caleb and Joshua had, what should we remember and what should we resist? You know, our attitude is contagious to those around us. We've gotten so careful about washing our hands and wiping down the surfaces and monitoring our temperature and even the slightest cough can be kind of a cause for alarm. And I think that's because fear has a short memory and a very strong imagination and it spreads faster than this virus. But our attitude affects those that we are around. We set the tone in our homes, don't we? We set the tone for our families and for our children and when we hear troubling news, and there is troubling news, it's easy to let our minds wander down all kinds of what-if trails. And that's what the scouts did. That's what the children of Israel did. The scouts, they came back and they kept talking about the cities and the walls and the giants. And it seemed like the more they thought about it and the more they talked about it, the bigger it got. We know what it's like to wake up in the night and you can't go back to sleep because there's so many problems or thoughts, anxiety stirring around in your mind and we just, it's more exaggerated in the dark, isn't it? I'm an early riser. I usually am up before the sun and I like to get my coffee and my Bible and go sit in my chair and uh, the street lights will cast all kinds of shapes and shadows against the living room wall when I'm sitting there um, from the trees outside. But you know, inside I have one large plant and it sits in the corner, this just giant leaves. But you know, at that time of morning when it's so dark, I can't tell the difference between the shadows coming in from the outside or the real plant, the stable plant that is in the corner, unless the wind stirs up outside and when the wind stirs up outside all of those shadows just come alive and start dancing all across the walls and distracting me pulling my attention and the other morning as i was studying this and thinking about it the lord used that as an example for me to understand and it was like you know these are all the shadows this is what's real and he reminded me resist the shadows Remember what is true. God's promises are true. Think of what he promised again and again, how the people needed to be reminded, and we need to be reminded. But he said, "I, you are my people. I will lead you into this land. I will give you the land. I am the Lord. At Mount Sinai, he said, you are my treasured possession. Who neglects to take care of their treasured possession? 
He said, I carried you here on eagle's wings. I brought you here. I won't drop you. I won't leave you to fend for yourself. And then in Exodus 34, he said, it is an amazing work that I am going to do for you, more than anything I've done for any other nation. But listen carefully. I will go ahead of you and drive out the people before you. How do we drive out fear? The way to push back the fear is by putting our faith into action. That's why Moses sent the scouts into to Canaan to spy the land. It wasn't to see if they should go in. It was to plan how they would go in. And like those spies, we are charting some unfamiliar territory also. But that's the upside of this quarantine life, isn't it? that we've been compelled to slow down and refocus. We are compelled every day to say, will we choose faith or will we choose fear? Will we refocus on the obstacles or will we embrace the opportunities? And how do we do that? How do we put our faith into action? We know how, don't we? Starts with prayer. Praying, and we've got the 714 in the morning and 714 in the evening to pray together as a body of Christ, as a church. Second Chronicles 714, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their ways, wicked ways, and hear, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And this has been our prayer. A few years ago, my grandson was pretty worked up about something. I don't remember what. But I just said, Owen, let's just stop right now. Let's just stop right now and pray together. And he said, I just can't pray right now. I have too much traffic in my heart. And I immediately thought, Lord, how often I have traffic in my heart. It keeps me from praying, praying carefully. How do we pray? to pray the traffic out of our heart. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. And we know that. That is the traffic controller for me. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That's how we get rid of the traffic in our heart. That's how we be strong. We stay in the Word, being in the Word, being in our Bible studies, listening and teaching our children, reading Bible stories and doing activities with them, and staying connected. You know, we've got social media here that a few weeks ago, we could actually kind of say, you know what, it's a little bit distracted, distracting and it pulls us away, but now... What a blessing it has been to have all of these. We have Zoom where we can, we can meet with our families and our friends and we can still meet as a virtue group and do these studies together. We have all kinds of social media. We have Harvest at Home, which, you know, to come together as the body of Christ, we have more opportunities to worship together and hear the word and pray together in our own homes than we had on a usual Sunday. We have opportunities with the kids, Harvest Bridge kids and Harvest, you know, the videos that they are posting of the children singing worship songs and reciting their memory verses, and I love it. There are simple creative ways that we have to be a light in our community. We know them. It's sending those notes to the neighbors, dropping by the store whenever they need something and they can't get out, taking them food whenever they're unable. Or those, uh, you know, we go out walking and there's those uh, cute chalk drawings on the sidewalk from the neighborhood kids just cheering you up, you know. And, and then, of course, now the Easter signs are going out. And I've loved seeing on Instagram uh, some of our pastors and many of our church volunteer and staff running up and waving to the people in the window as they put the sign down, you know, to help them, for them because the people wanted it in their yard. And I just love this. And, you know, there's so many things that we we could focus on that this is a difficult time and a scary time. And yet, if we focus not on the obstacles, but on the opportunities that we have, this is a unique time and we wouldn't have asked for it. And we want it to be over quickly. But let's focus on the opportunities and make the most of this time 
while God has given it to us. Thank you for listening. I hope it's blessed you. It's blessed me getting to share it with you. And I look forward to the day when we can all be back together in the same room. Love you all. God bless.